Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Justin Seeley and I know it has been a minute, but Thank you anyway for stopping by and making me a part of your day. If you have not done so already and you like graphic design tutorials, technology reviews, stuff like that, please consider subscribing to the channel and also don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you get a little ding each and every time I post a new video. Also, if you're looking for me outside of this little square here, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Justin Seeley and also on Instagram at Justin S. Seeley. So I had to throw in an extra S in there because somebody stole my name. Thank you, whoever you were. And um, yeah, that's about it. And if you like this video, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel grow, helps the uh, feeding of the algorithm, so to speak. So I'd really appreciate that. But without further ado, let's jump right in. What is today's tutorial about? Well, we're going to be talking about how to select complex objects in Photoshop, specifically hair, because this is something that has always given me trouble. And up until recently, when I started diving back into Photoshop, took a little hiatus, as you may have noticed, um, they've added some really cool stuff that like when I first saw it in action, I was like, holy sh**. How did they do that? Um, and I'm going to show it to you today. So let's take a look at the image that we're going to be working with here. And I'll show you the, why this image is possibly problematic. The photo itself is very good, but as you can see in the photo itself, there are a lot of little wispy hairs, little flyaways that we want to capture. We don't want to lose those in the selection and we want those to look natural against whatever background we put behind it. So in order to do that, we're going to have to really make a refined selection around that hair. Used to, that would take a long time, like maybe some pen tool action, refine edge, uh, refine edge brushing inside the selected mask tool. I mean, my goodness, the, the, the possibilities for tool use were endless, but now there's like a couple of buttons that you hit and it's just like, bang, bang, boom, there it is. It's all done. And holy crap, is it amazing? So let me show you what I mean. I'll zoom out just a little bit here so we can get a picture of my man. And I'm going to start off with a very interesting tool, a tool that when I first start using it, you're going to be like, okay, Justin took a break from doing Photoshop stuff and he lost his damn mind. No, this is just how I do it. And it helps Photoshop in certain cases. And I'll explain why when I'm doing it. So I'm going to grab the lasso tool, believe it or not, by pressing the letter L on my keyboard. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I'm going to be making a rough selection around this gentleman, as you can see. And by rough, I do mean rough. I'm just kind of going around the edge of the guy, kind of like this, not being precise at all. And when I'm done, it looks something like that. Now, why am I doing that? I'm doing that because in more complex compositions, things that don't have solid backgrounds, this helps Photoshop sort of refine the area that it's going to be looking for your main subject within. So in essence, I'm educating Photoshop ahead of time, trying to give it a head start. That's, that's essentially how I look at it. Now, once we have this rudimentary selection uh, made here, we're just going to go up to the options bar and we're going to hit select and mask. Not an unusual tool. We've been here before, but inside of select and mask, there is a button called select subject. Now I could have started with select subject. And since we were on a single background like we were, it probably would have worked just fine. But in more complex backgrounds, making a selection like this and then using select subject oftentimes helps you a little bit. So hit select subject. Boom. Just like that. My man is completely silhouetted. You'll notice there is a little bit of an orange glow about him, especially around the hair, a little bit on the shoulder. So those are some things that we need to kind of get rid of. And luckily for us, there are a couple of buttons in here that make it extremely easy to do so. So first and foremost, let's get rid of some of the fringe around the hair. And we do that with one click of a button, this little guy right here, refine hair. Now this is something that when I first saw it, that was when I was like, holy crap. When I click this button, it fringes out all of that stuff. 
you can see a lot of the orange disappears. Now, there's still some stuff going on in there, a little light brown looking stuff in there. But for the most part, whether you know it or not, that hair is almost completely silhouetted out. And check it out. If I switch here to like, uh, let's say a white background, something like that. Look how good that looks. See how good that looks? That's freaking amazing. So let's change it back to a black background. That way you can see everything that's going on. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little button right down here at the bottom called decontaminate colors. And when I do that, I want you to take a look at the shoulders. And I also want you to take a look around the edges there. So some of the shoulders still not exactly what we want, which is totally cool. That's fine. We can fix those in post and the hair looks really wild, right? But watch this. Watch when I change the color to something like, oh, I don't know. Let's change it to a green. Oh, huh. Looks pretty good. So here I'm just going to hit. Okay. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to hit new layer with new layer mask and hit. Okay. And once I do that, there is my man completely silhouetted out hair done very nicely. Everything else looking cool to prove my point to prove my point. I'm going to throw a layer underneath here. So I'm going to hold down the command key on Mac control key on PC, click to add a layer underneath the layer that we're working on. And let's pick some sort of like a bright pinkish color and then option delete all backspace underneath. And there we go. Now, if you want to check your selection, option or alt click on your layer mask and you'll be able to see some of the areas where there might still be some refinement needed so here for example i've got some stuff missing from his ears around his neck so i'm just going to grab my brush tool set my default colors by pressing the letter d and then i'm going to make sure that i'm using a hard edge brush so i'm holding shift and the right bracket key to do that and then i'm just going to downsize the size of the brush and paint right in like that fill that in right around the neck fill that in just like that option alt click let's zoom back out and there is my finished silhouette and i can put this guy basically on any background i want i'll group these things together command and control g turn on the bottom here is before and here is after and as you can see it's really, really, really simple to do. So the next time you have something complex to select in Photoshop, whether it's, you know, the bride at a wedding with her hair flowing everywhere, or maybe it's a cat or a dog or something like that, and their little fluffy hairs are blowing in the wind, Photoshop's got you covered. They've got amazing tools in here now that make it like so freaking easy to do. It's like almost cheating in a way. Uh, it makes me want to go back like 20 years and redo some of my college projects that were really, really bad. But in any case, um, I'm glad we have the tools now and you can get amazing results like this. So that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you so, so much for stopping by today. And thank you for coming back to the channel. I know I haven't been around. That's going to change. We're going to be here more regularly. I can't really commit to like, oh, I'm going to be here every day, but I will be here more often. You can guarantee that. And I'll have more stuff for you in Photoshop, Illustrator, and many other things as well. Lots of stuff, lots of great stuff planned for the channel. So thanks for stopping by, everybody. I'll see you again real soon.